Hey everyone, this is Kamran and today we're going to talk about YAML. YAML stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language. It was originally called yet another markup language because it came at a time when there was a lot of markup languages being introduced such as HTML, XML and so on. But YAML is much more than a markup language and that's why the name was changed to YAML Ain't Markup Language. So what is YAML? YAML is a data serialization language similar to JSON and XML which is used to store and represent the data. You might have seen it used in GitHub Actions, in Docker, in Kubernetes and a lot of other DevOps tools use YAML files for the configurations. YAML files have the extension of .yml or .yaml and a file can consist of multiple different things. In this video we'll be covering all these different parts with the examples. So first of all we have start. Start of a YAML document is marked by three dashes in the beginning of a YAML document. Next we have ending. Ending is marked by three dots at the end of the YAML document. Both the start and the ending are optional and you're only required to put them when a YAML file may consist of multiple different YAML documents and you want to separate between all the documents in the file. You can also have comments in the file. Comments start with the pound sign and you can also have multiple line comments with multiple pound signs in the beginning of each line. YAML files are just a bunch of key value pairs. You can have underscore in the key name. You can also have the spaces in there. Key name can also have dot in there. You can also have quotes around the key names which is useful when you have colon in the key name and also you can have the numeric keys as well. The value for each key can be of a specific type. There are two categories of types supported by YAML. So first of all we have scalar types. There are six common ones which are listed here. And then we have the collection types which are maps and sequences. YAML is also able to parse the ISO formatted date times as well. So here I have a date time in front of a key. We can also have the space within the date and time and we can also have the dates only as well. You can also use the floating point values. You can have integers as well and you can also have booleans with true and false values and you can also have the null values. For the strings you can have the strings without the quotes. You can have the strings with the quotes and you can also have the strings with nested quotes. For double quotes within a double quote you have to escape the quote with a backslash. For a single quote within a single quote you have to escape them with an additional single quote before the quote. You can also have the multi-line strings in YAML files as well. There are two ways to do that. First is with the pipe operator which is also called a literal block. You put two spaces and the line and line break and then put two spaces and the line. The string values created using this way is going to preserve the new lines. The indentation of two spaces is just recommended approach but you can also have three, four or whatever you want as the space indentation. If you don't want the line breaks and you want the line breaks to be converted into spaces, you can use the folded block approach. So you have the same space indentation and the lines but this way YAML is going to consider both of these as one string separated by a space. The indentation is again recommended to be two spaces but you can also have four, five or whatever the space count you want. Alright so next we have the collection type map. Map is similar to an object in the other languages. So again we start with the key then we have the two spaces and the key value pair for all the properties of the object. We can also have the nested objects. So here we have education with two properties college and year. YAML is going to parse it as this JSON object. So we have user key with the first name and the profession and then we we have education key with college and year. The indentation is again recommended to be two spaces but you can have any space count. You can also represent the same object with object notation as well. So we can have curly bracket, first name, value, profession, value and close the bracket. And you can also represent the same object as this as well. Next we have the sequence type which is similar to array or list. So we start with the key then we have the indentation of two spaces as recommended but it is optional because if you don't put that the dash is going to be used as an indentation marker and then we have the values. The value can be of any type. It can be a string, a number, an object, another list or a simple string. YAML is going to parse it as a key with the array of items in the list. You can write the same thing as the array with the values inside the square brackets which can also be formatted as this and both will result in the same format. Alright so next we have explicit tags. YAML is always going to try and identify the type of the value from the value itself. 
but there might be cases where you might want to override the type. So now if we look at the app config, YAML is going to take retry account as an integer five. But let's say that we want to take it as a float instead. So in that case, what we can do is we can put an explicit tag of not not float. And now it will be taken as a floating point value of 5.0. Next we have timeout which will also be taken as an integer. To take it as a string we can put not not str and now it will be taken as a string value of 1500. And now for the version we have 1.0 so it will be taken as a float. To take it as an integer we can put not not int and now it will be taken as 1. And finally we have the anchors which are used to reuse the values within the YAML file. So let's say that we have these three objects, father, mother and the baby all have the name and age. Now let's say that we need another key called names where we have to place all the names of father, mother and the baby. So we're going to copy the name from each of the keys and put that in the names array. The issue with this approach is so now we have each of the names duplicated in two places. So which means that if we have to change one of the names, we have to update that in the two places. To solve this issue of the duplication, we can use the anchors. So in front of any YAML key, you can put an anchor, let's say ampersand F name. And now we can reuse this anchor anywhere in the YAML file. So for example, to use the father name in the names array, we can put star F name. And now it will take the same name from the name key of the father in the names array. We can repeat the same for mother name as well. So ampersand L name in front of the mother name and we're using the same name inside the names array with a star. And we can repeat the same for the baby. And now we have all the names in one place and they are being reused all across the YAML file. We can use anchors to merge objects as well. Let's take an example of father and mother. Now we have the two common properties across both the objects, species and the planet. We can take them out into a separate object called base and we can assign an anchor to the base with ampersand base and to merge the properties of this base object into the father and mother, we can use two angle brackets colon star base. So this way it is going to take all the properties of the base object and it is going to put them inside father and mother. We can also override the properties after merging. So let's say that in the father object we want to update the planet to be Mars. So in this case after the merger we can put planet Mars and it is going to override the planet Earth from the base. I have prepared a sample node application to give you a demo of everything that we have covered in this lesson. So here I have index.js, inside that I have installed js-yaml which is going to be used to parse the yaml file. Then we are reading this file sample.yaml and then we are parsing that file with yaml.load and then I am printing it to the console here. Everything that we have covered in this lesson is given in this yaml file with all the comments. To look at how this yaml is parsed, I will go to the console and I will run node space index.js and here is the output from the parsing of this sample yaml file. I have given the link to this project in the description below. You can go and check it out on the github. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you in the next one.